In this tutorial, we will hands-on master a song that was generated by AI using Audacity. By the end of the video, you should be able to do basic mastering on your songs using free software. Let's start. Let's begin with an example of a mastered and a not mastered track. Here is a song that I created on Suno and below a song from the charts that was mastered by an engineer. See the difference in loudness. On the upper song, the loudness is lower. The waveform is not using all available sound space. The headroom left shows a lot of room for improvement. Even if we just turn up the volume, you can see the lower song does not look like a fish skeleton but more like a sword. How do we get there? Let's go step by step. This is the full mastering workflow I use. I never use all steps at once but only what I need. Strictly speaking, mastering is only normalization and compression or limiting. Today we will cover the process of limiting and normalizing, which cover 90% of the use cases you will need. Basically, what we will do is apply a normalizer, then a limiter and a normalizer again. This process can be repeated as many times as necessary. You will see why. Of course you should convert your music to a WAV format and at the end back to MP3. I covered that on another video. Normalizing is easy to understand and is the most important step across mastering. You will be doing this over and over. Let me zoom in. This is the audio as it comes out of Suno. Immediately we see that the audio is not reaching up to zero decibel. There is a gap from the top peak that is between three and four decibel. The gap is usually symmetric. So it's okay to only measure the top or bottom half if you only want to get a feel of the gap. But there is a more accurate method. We mark the whole audio with Control A. Then we open the amplitude plugin that we installed in the last video and we press OK. The result is the higher value. And since we are in the digital domain, it's the value closer to zero. So it's 332 dB. For today's process, you don't need to write it down. I'll do it just for the purpose of this video. Now we can see that it matches to what our eyes can roughly see. This value means that we can safely amplify the audio by 332 dB and it won't go over 0 dB. We could do this, but there is an easier way. Let me introduce you to our friend, the normalizer. Mark all the audio using Control A and select Effect Volume and Compression and then Normalize. A normalizer will automatically get the top peak level and amplify your audio so that the top peak reaches a desired value. Normalizer have sometimes extra features, but you only need one main parameter, the target loudness. This is the only you really care about. It says to what value you want to amplify. For reasons, please do not normalize to zero. For the moment, trust me on this or Google for the keyword true peak. Anyways, for now, just remember to always normalize to a value below zero. I personally like minus zero six, but some people advise to normalize to minus one. It depends on your music and with experience you will get a feeling for it. Let's press OK. The waveform now is bigger and using more of the sound space. In summary, the normalizer will amplify your audio up to a level that you define. We will use this feature quite often, as you will see. Still you can see it's not fully reaching the level we saw at the beginning. Let's see why. We normalize the song, but it's not yet optimally using the sound space. The problem is that numerous single peaks prevent us from making it louder. In order to have a good sounding audio, the normalizer amplifies the whole audio, keeping its loudness proportions. The trick for more loudness is the fact that the single peaks are so small in the time scale that a single peak will not be actually audible. It is perfectly fine to cut or reduce a peak. Still, we cannot just go peak by peak. Too much work. Instead, we will define a loudness limit and reduce everything that is louder than this limit. Audio that is below the limit will not be touched. You can compare it to grass mowing. Only the protruding grasses are cut. But how do we know what is the threshold to cut? Well, there is a couple of ways. First, we will just go visually. If we squint our eyes so we see a blurry image, then the peaks kind of disappear. Let me show you. Now only the thicker area is visible. 
That is the core body of your audio. Let's draw an imaginary line around it. The area we have to preserve is the really thick sausage in the middle. We can cut a bit into that, but cutting too much would cause the audio to sound distorted. Later we will see that it's okay to cut a bit more than a bit less. So for the moment it's okay to set a rough value. Now we just have to remember the level of the highest part of the sausage. That will be our cutting limit. I estimated it to be 3, 5 dB. It's not critical to ultra exact with this number. Audio is patient and has some leeway. After every step you can just hear to your audio and see if it sounds weird or distorted. Let's do some limit. We again mark all the audio. Open the limiter from the menu effect, volume and compression and select limiter to open the limiter tool. As for the limiter tool, there is one main parameter we care about, and there are secondary parameters. Our main parameter will always be the limit or threshold. It sets the bar for the audio to be cut. We set it to the value we marked before. A true limiter should always be set to hard limiting. Trust me on this for now. And also, in the case of Audacity, it offers me to perform a loudness increase by the same amount we are limiting. So I set this to no because I want to do this manually later. So, after we set the threshold to 3, 5 dB, we press apply. The audio peaks were diminished to the level we wanted. Remember, for the limiter, our parameter is the audio limit. Sometimes it is called threshold. So now, we just need to normalize again to 0, 6 dB. Yummy, this looks better. Let's hear how it sounds. First, let's hear the original audio, and then the mastered audio. That sounds louder and all instruments come more to life. Up to here, it's quite safe and you can stop. If you want, however, you can repeat the cycle of limiting and normalizing. That's where it starts to get tricky, because if you push it too much, your audio gets distorted. It's not easy to recognize distortion well without a good equipment, but you don't need to worry too much about it since audio peaks can be cut it a lot before it starts sounding bad. Let's see how it would sound if I didn't limit to minus 3, 5, but to minus 10 dB, a big scary number. So, we quickly mark the audio to got limiter and set the limit to minus 10, then normalize it back to minus 0, 6 and press apply. If you have normal to low quality speakers, you probably did or did not hear a difference. On a big equipment, like on a concert venue, you definitely would. The only important thing to remember is that you can push it to a certain level without fear. Also, there is always the undo function. So we optimized audio using the workflow of limiting and normalizing. Let's quickly see the main parameters again. For a limiter, you need the limiting threshold. Audio above this limit will be diminished down to the limit. Audio below it will not be changed. A normalizer will increase the volume of a waveform so that the top peak reaches the target level. Also, we saw a quick method to get the needed threshold. Also learned that a threshold has some leeway and we can push the limits a bit. I hope it was easy to understand and helped you understand the mastering process. That's it for today. 
In a future video, I might cover this topic more in depth. I wish you a happy mastering.